Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. Lady Norris, the woman whose husband was executed for sleeping with Anne Boleyn. Now, Anne Boleyn's downfall was expertly plotted by Thomas Cromwell, who had been tasked with getting King Henry VIII out of his second marriage, as he had grown tired of her. The notorious six-wived king was falling for Jane Seymour, another woman at court, and it's believed that Jane and Henry did have an intimate relationship whilst he was married to Anne. There was an incident where Anne allegedly walked into a room where she saw Jane sitting on the lap of her husband, the king, and with this she flew into a huge rage, and this brought on a miscarriage. To get the king out of his marriage to Anne, Cromwell spun an intricate web of lives and political scandal that slandered Anne Boleyn, accusing her of incest, adultery and treason, all against her husband. It was a sharp departure from the obsession Henry initially had with her, as he even broke from the Catholic Church to marry Anne. But Henry was a ruthless man, as was Cromwell. Anne's charge of adultery saw her and five other men accused of engaging in sexual relations behind the back of the king, and one of these men was Sir Henry Norris. Norris was a very well thought of man inside the court of King Henry VIII, and he had a rather disgusting yet believed to have been privileged position as the groom of the stool, basically a royal bottom wiper for Henry VIII. This must have been a terrible job, However, he was a close servant of Henry and managed to get some time alone with the king, which was considered important. But it was Norris who was implicated in the plot of sleeping with Anne Boleyn. But if he would have done this, he too would have been cheating on his wife, who was a lady in waiting for Anne Boleyn. The Norrises were targeted by Cromwell and were devastated by the allegations. Mary Fiennes was born around the year 1495 at Hurstman Zoo Castle in Sussex. The castle itself is one of the oldest brick buildings still standing in England, and it's a beautiful moated castle. Construction began, and Roger Fiennes oversaw the building project. And over the 15th century, the castle remained in the possession of the Fiennes family. Mary was the only daughter of Thomas Fiennes, the eighth Baron Darcy and Anne Borcher and she was from a rather significant family, as her mother's stepfather was Thomas Howard, the Earl of Surrey, meaning that Anne Boleyn was Mary's mother's cousin. This showed that the Fiennes family were also linked to the crown, and Anne also was a lady of the bedchamber to Catherine of Aragon, the first wife of Henry VIII. Mary's links to the throne were also bolstered with the fact she was descended from King Edward III. Mary had two younger brothers, and as mentioned, her mother was the cousin of Anne Boleyn and Catherine Howard, and her grandmother was also the sister of Catherine Parr's grandmother, making her a cousin yet again to another one of Henry VIII's queens. This placed Mary at court, and as a prominent member of the royal court, and in 1514 she was appointed to become a maid of honour to Princess Mary Tudor. In this role, she went with Henry VIII's sister to accompany her to France, where she then married King Louis XII of France. It was hoped that this marriage would bring together the two nations, and it was normal for princesses like Mary to bring over ladies-in-waiting and a household to a different country. Mary Fiennes must have been well thought of in France, and she also then became a maid of honour to the following queen, Claude, who was the consort of the new French king, Francis I. In this role, she was a maid of honour alongside her cousin Mary Boleyn and also Anne Boleyn, who had been sent across to France at the time. Around the year 1520, Mary returned to England and the English court, and she married the courtier Sir Henry Norris. The pair had met at the Field of the Cloth of Gold in France, where Henry VIII and Francis I both met in a grand spectacle. The summit was a huge statement of wealth by the two, and it was supposed to bring them together and to form a strong friendship. However, it did little to do this, and some tension did arise from the summit. Henry Norris, Mary's husband, had served as a gentleman of the bedchamber, and he was very well liked by Henry VIII, and he was a prominent confidant and friend of Henry VIII. It was stated that he was the king's closest friend, and that he had control of the privy chamber, allowing people's exclusive access to the Tudor monarch when he saw fit. This meant that he had a significant role at court, and in a sense was a close secretary to the king. 
Together in their marriage, the Norrises had four children. Mary Fiennes, now known as Lady Norris, had given birth first to a son named William, then two more sons called Henry and Edward. Before a girl, Mary, was born in 1526. She gave birth to four children in three years, and this would have taken its toll on Mary. However, Mary passed away at a young age, at around 35 in 1531, and her loss would have been felt a lot at court. She was close to the wives of Henry VIII. However, what occurred within five years of her death tarnished the names of the Norrises for centuries to come, and also left her four children as orphans. Henry remained close to the king, and he was also close to Anne Boleyn initially, as he helped the royal court inspect property. He remained in favour following Mary's death, and was given the constableship of different castles, but he did attract some criticism at court. Henry had helped Anne Boleyn to establish her position at court, and he became close with her and was seen as a leader of the Boleyn faction at court. He backed the Queen to demonstrate and wield political power, which brought Norris in direct conflict with Thomas Cromwell. As Anne fell from favour in 1536, with Henry looking for a way out of his marriage, Henry Norris was seen as the perfect target for the allegations levelled against her, as he was seen as a close supporter and also confident of Anne. This put him at risk, and Cromwell saw Anne and her associates as a barrier for him to get what he wanted, and he began to plot their downfall. When Cromwell made the accusations against her, it was said how Sir Henry Norris was accused of being solicited by Anne at Westminster on the 6th of October and again on the 12th of October, and also once more in November. This accused Norris of sleeping with Anne three times, and the date would have meant Norris would have slept with her as she was recovering from the birth of Princess Elizabeth. The accusations caused huge scandal, and Cromwell also indicted four other men on charges related to sleeping with the Queen Anne Boleyn. He hastily arranged the trial for the four men who were not members of the higher nobility, and this included Norris. The trial was held in Westminster Hall, and the jury, which included Anne's own father and uncle, oversaw the proceedings, finding the men, including Henry Norris, guilty. Despite pleading not guilty, Norris could do little to protect himself against his impending fate. He was sentenced to death, to die a horrific traitor's death, being hanged, drawn and quartered. Because he was in service to the king, though, the sentence was commuted to a simpler beheading by axe. The execution of Henry Norris was carried out on the 18th of May 1536 on Tower Hill. On the scaffold he chose his words carefully as to not risk being executed in a harsher way, but as he was decapitated it left the children of Henry and Mary without any parents. Elizabeth I referred to Norris as a nobleman who died in the justification of her mother's innocence, but the downfall of the Norris family at court was bloody, harsh and based upon falsities. Following the death of his wife Mary, Henry never remarried, and it's clear that he remained in power at court. Lady Norris was seen as a loyal and trustworthy maid of honour, who was well respected in the royal court of England and France, which was something to be proud of. Together the couple at court held prominent positions and were key players in daily court drama and life. However, Mary Fiennes died sadly at a young age, which led to her children following the execution of her husband becoming orphans. It's unsure how she would have been implicated in Anne Boleyn's saga if she would have been alive, as it's possible that Cromwell would have stayed away from accusations against her husband if she would have been around at the time. Thank you for watching and to support. Please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.